Hello, I'm Graham Horton and welcome to this video. Now, this video comes about because of a number of requests to do a tutorial on the Panasonic Lumix DMC FZ8082 bridge camera. I guess the reason is that this camera appeals to quite a few people because of its price point and because of this fantastic times 60 zoom. But the request has come to produce a series of videos showing you how to use this camera but not using any of the technical jargon that I tend to use when I'm doing other tutorials. So in this series, I'll try to keep away from the uh, technical aspects. Now, if I do lapse into some of the technical details, I'll try to keep them as minimal as possible and try to explain them in the most simplistic terms. So this is the Panasonic Lumix DMC FZ80 or 82 camera, depending on the region you buy it in. It's a times 60 zoom, so that means you can pull in some distant subjects with this telephoto lens. Now that does come at a price, and I'll be showing you why that happens and uh, how to overcome some of those limitations in this series of videos. So in today's video, it's going to be a quick introduction to the camera, have a look at some of the controls, have a look at some of the menus, look at the battery charging and the type of memory card that I suggest you use with the camera. In the second video, we'll be going out shooting with the camera and I'll be showing you some of the uh, shots you take in the fully automatic mode. So we've got the IA and the IA+. Plus. The IA+, Plus is like an advanced mode of the uh, point and shoot system and it gives you some flexibility of being able to change some of the parameters that you might want to to get better pictures than the camera would normally take under those situations. Then we'll progress to the uh, program auto mode, which is again a semi-automatic mode but it takes away the camera's guessing as to what type of scene type you're using. So it gives you the opportunities of setting up some of the parameters to get better pictures than you can in the fully automatic mode. Then we'll be looking at the manual controls and then at video and how to get some great video with this camera, notwithstanding the fact that we haven't got an external microphone port on here. So all the sound is coming from the internal microphones or you can actually uh, record the audio on a smartphone or something like that and then sync it in post-production to the video track from the camera and I'll be showing you how to do that in a later video. So let's have a look. The bottom of the camera contains the trap door which allows you to gain access to both the battery and the memory card. So the battery is the uh, DMW BMB9. So it's a 7.4 volt battery designed for the camera and it just plugs into the bottom of the camera, push it home until you hear that click and that locates with the contact within the camera. Now the memory card here is a secure digital, an SD card, and the one I've got here is a class 3. So it allows me to use this camera with 4K video. Now if you're not going to be shooting 4K video, then you only need to get a UHC class 1 card which is much cheaper, or it's the old class 10 rating. So if you look on screen, I'll show you the SD card with the speed ratings and the type that you might want to purchase. Don't go over 64 megabytes. Uh, there is a risk that if that memory card fails, you'll lose all the pictures on it. So I tend to stay with 64 or 32 gigabyte cards. And again on screen, you can see the type that I use with this camera. And again, that just goes into the slot in the bottom of the camera, normally with the logo, facing the front of the camera and then that just locks in place close and lock the battery door on the top of the camera we've got numerous controls uh, the one you'll be using most of course is the power on off switch so that's a power on off switch slides camera powers up does a self check to make sure everything's fine and then you can carry on shooting we've got controls on the top we've got what's called the mode dial and that allows us to change the mode at which the camera is operating in to begin with, we're going to be shooting in the fully automatic mode, and that is going to be the IA position on the mode dial. So you just align the IA to the mark on the flash housing, and that puts the camera in the fully automatic mode. We've got our zoom lever here, which allows us to zoom in or zoom out, and that can be either a continuous zoom, or we can set it up so it will go out in increments, which are uh, fixed amounts. Within that zoom lever, We've got our shutter release button, half press to focus, fully press to take the picture. The zoom lever can also be used to quickly scroll through the menus, as you'll see when we look through some of the menu options. We've got our video record button, which is normally uh, a red dot, but I have uh, fixed a little uh, plastic jewel on there to give me a more tactile feel, 
for the video button when I'm shooting video. Got two function buttons on the top, one mark function one, the other mark function two, and we'll go through the program versus of those buttons. On the back of the camera, we've got a, a dial, which is push to operate. So we can adjust the value that the uh, camera is set to, or we can change what it's set to by pushing that uh, button in. We can change between, say, the shutter speed and the aperture, and you'll see that later in the video. We've got our viewfinder on the back, which is the electronic viewfinder marked LVF on this camera. Some cameras mark them EVF for electronic viewfinder. Now this is the default EVF as you get it, plastic housing. I like to fit this Nikon DK20 plastic um, frame which has got a rubber surround. We just glue that onto the back of the housing and it gives us a much softer feel to the eye and precludes light from getting into that viewfinder when you're in bright sunlight. The LCD screen, so you can actually use this as a touch screen. You can use the electronic viewfinder and the touch screen in combination. So while you're looking through the viewfinder, you can actually set the focus point on the LCD screen, as we'll see. On the top of the camera, we've got our hot shoe, which allows us to use our flash guns if we're using this with an external flash gun. To enable the internal flash, we've just got a button on the back of the camera. Press that and it releases the flash to bring up the cobra head flash. The main button on the back here is the uh, four-way navigation dial and in the middle of that is the menu set. We use this cursor control to enable us to move through the menu or we can use it in some instances to set the position of the focus uh, spot. So we'll be seeing that as we go through the menus. Got two other buttons here. One is the um, button which allows us to change the automatic focus and we've got another button here which will allow us to change the way that the automatic focus and automatic exposure work with the camera. Two more buttons here on the bottom of the camera. One is the Q menu, which is an abridged menu, allows you to get quickly through some of the menu setups. And the other is the display button, which allows us to change the way that this LCD or the EVF uh, are looking towards you. Main lens at the front, and of course, is controlled by the zoom lever, so we can step out to the full optical zoom which is times 60 and we can then zoom back. Now I like to fit a lens out to the camera. If you wear a peak cap in bright sunlight you know how that shades down the amount of light getting into your eyes. It's the same with this lens hood. It prevents stray light hitting your lens and uh, degrading your photo. So I'll show you how to fit that and the type to use in a later video. So that's it for the basic introduction. Hope you're going to follow along with the uh, program. If you're a new viewer and you haven't subscribed to the channel, do click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon and I'll advise you when I upload new videos in this series. Uh, from statistics, I know that 70% uh, of the viewers that watch this channel don't actually subscribe. So it would really help if you are one of those viewers, please do hit that subscribe button. It would help immensely. So until part one, which is going to be setting up to shoot in the fully automatic mode. It's going and saying thanks very much for watching. Please do take care and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Goodbye for now.